Hello, this is Lawrence Farmwater with ANN News, Headquarters, Washington, D.C., August 15th, 1876. I'm filling in for Mr. Edward Softwater, who's on vacation this week. Now, we have a live TV hookup at the home of abolitionist and Quaker businessman, Levi Coffin. Hello, Mr. Coffin. Well, yes, hello. Uh, this is my home where the actual slaves came, and uh, we would actually have them enter through this garret you see here, this hidden door. We'd usually have a bed that would hide them so no one would see the garret. The slave hunters would come to look at this attic, and they would see that there was no one up there, and therefore we have no slaves or fugitives present. Pretty much that was the system. I have Catherine in the other room. I'd like to introduce you to her. She's making our evening meal. Let's go join Catherine. Okay. Clever hiding place. Let's meet your wife, Catherine, now. Darling, Catherine, we have some visitors via some kind of technology. You used to have a home in Newport, Indiana, years ago, didn't you? Uh, yes, that is correct. From 1826 through 1847. It was a home just like this one here that we're in today. This lantern that you see in the, in the windowsill was lit to signify to the slaves that it was time that they could come into the house and into the garret. It would be safe passage for them. If the lantern was off, that meant they needed to stay hidden in the forest. The only other thing about this house that is uh, not part of it was this fine painting of Whistler's mother. This here I got in London a few years ago. Doesn't it grab your attention? Yes, the frame is very colorful, and the mother concept comes across. I want to ask you something. You became president of the Underground Railroad. Isn't that right? Well, yes, unofficially that is. Um, it was a name given to me by the slave owners themselves. They were coming up north to hunt for their missing slaves and they couldn't find their whereabouts anywhere and as they approached near my house they thought to themselves there must be some type of underground railroad in which I was president. Then on their journeys back south they kept talking about this story and then the name just stuck. I understand you ran a successful underground railroad station in Newport, Indiana and in your book you said you freed 3,300 slaves in a 20-year period. Would you like to tell us something about that operation? Oh, yes. Yes, it was successful. No one of them got caught. <laughs> Volumes 1 through 10, On the Road to the Abolition of Slavery. Volumes 1 and 2, Introduction on the Road to the Abolition of Slavery. Slavery explained in the words, writing, and songs of contemporary politicians, abolitionists, slaves, pro-slavery advocates, and others. Volume 3, Politics, on the Road to the Abolition of Slavery. The Institution of Slavery and How It Was Written into the U.S. Constitution. Volume 4, Heroes and Heroines on the Road to the Abolition of Slavery. Liberated from the shackles of slavery, countless slaves made extraordinary contributions to society. Volume 5, Obstacles on the Road to the Abolition of Slavery. Slavery culturally entrenched and protected by religious, political, and social obstacles. Volume 6, Martyrs on the Road to the Abolition of Slavery. People black and white gave their lives in the fight for freedom from slavery. Volume 7, Kidnappers and Justice on the Road to the Abolition of Slavery. The law protected slavery and the scales of justice were in favor of the slave owners. Harriet Beecher Stowe, The Evil of Slavery. Stowe reveals the people and the conditions that inspired her explosive novel about slavery and life in the South. 
Volume 8, The Legacy of What Slavery Left Behind War-ravaged people struggle to rebuild their society and come to terms with the repercussion of slavery after the Civil War. Volume 9, Those Dedicated Angels on the Road to the Abolition of Slavery Recognizing the work of 12 abolitionists whose extraordinary dedication helped to free the enslaved, these are the people who fought for a higher standard of mankind. Volume 10, Coming Soon, Summer 2013 The Beginning of Slavery Indentured Servants and the Transatlantic Slave Trade Colonial plantations needed labor more orphans, loose women, convicts, and Quakers than the old world could send as indentured servants. So the colonists looked to Africa, and the transatlantic slave trade thrived for 450 years. <laughs>